Hey guys, Dr. Kelsey here. So I just wanted to give you a brief rundown of thyroid hormones. A lot of patients come into my office questioning about thyroid. I actually run thyroid labs on a lot of people. So I thought I'd create just a brief video to give you a quick rundown of what basic thyroid labs look like and what they mean. A lot of different providers out there run different kinds of thyroid labs. Some just run a TSH, some just run TSH and T4. But really there's a big story that we're trying to look at here with your thyroid, and so I just wanted to clear that up for you. Now, there, a lot of people think of thyroid as like hypothyroid or hyperthyroid being a problem with just the thyroid gland in your throat. It sits right here, and really when we talk about thyroid, we're talking about an entire story. It's really a game of telephone that goes between your brain, your thyroid, and then all of the cells of your body. And so we need to look at a certain number of labs to fully understand that story, okay? So I'm gonna start by just drawing a picture of some of the different organs that are involved or the organs or cells that are involved in this pathway, okay? Very rudimentary. So first of all, we're gonna start with the brain, okay? So let's draw a picture of the brain. Okay, so here's your brain. Then I'm gonna draw a picture of the thyroid. And the thyroid is kind of this like butterfly-shaped gland, like I said, that sits in your throat. So we'll name that guy right here. And then I'm gonna just draw your cell. And obviously, you know, the cells are all over your body, but we're just gonna draw it in this kind of a fashion, okay? Now let me just give you a little bit of background on thyroid. I think of thyroid kind of like the coal that goes in the furnace. It's what powers an engine, right? So it's kind of the fire in your body. Um, if you, you guys have probably heard about the terms hyperthyroid or hypothyroid, um, what's pretty typical in people who have hyperthyroid, so they have a lot of hyper or a lot hyper, a lot of thyroid hormone in their body, means that they're going to have a lot of coal going in the furnace. So everything's going to be kind of amped up, right? So their metabolism is going to be higher, their energy level is going to be higher, they may have anxiety, they may have higher blood pressure or higher heart rate. Um, they generally are like really quick fat burners. Um, they have trouble sleeping, so there's everything's kind of amped up, right? Now on the other side of that is our hypothyroid population, and if you imagine that as just not having enough coal to feed the furnace with, it's like everything slows down, right? So we start to get low energy, start to get fatigued, there can be some depression, trouble losing weight, hair loss, dry skin, everything just kind of slows down, right? Now, the importance of looking at this is because there's a lot of things with thyroid um, that can be confusing, especially if we're only looking at one or two values in this system. So if we go back to here, we have brain to thyroid to cell, okay? Now, the way that these communicate are, are it's via hormones, okay? So your brain communicates with your thyroid gland with the hormone called TSH, okay? TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone, which means it tells you what it does. It's a hormone that stimulates the thyroid, okay? So this hormone isn't actually the coal in your furnace, okay? It just tells the thyroid to make the coal, okay? So TSH. Your thyroid then, in response to this message, makes a hormone called T T4, it also makes one T3. Now T4 is really converted to T3 in the body, but just for ease of explanation, let's just say we have these two hormones that come out from the thyroid, okay? T4 and T3. These are the coal, okay, that fuels your furnace. And these go to the cells, and the cells pick that up and basically get their energy from it, okay? So here's what happens. This is like your typical pathway. Now, the cells, basically our whole body, when we have any kind of hormone production going on in our body, there's a basic system in place to keep this from going out of whack, right? We don't want the brain just constantly signaling the thyroid with TSH because then the thyroid is going to constantly be making T4 and T3 and your cells are going to be overrun with energy and then that gets you into your hyperthyroid. On the other side of that, we also don't want this production to be too low because then your body's not getting enough thyroid. So what ends up happening is there's actually a message, it's called a negative feedback loop, that your cells can then send a message back up to your brain to say whether they have enough thyroid hormone or not. So 
if the thyroid is producing a lot of T4 and T3, and the cells get all that they need, then they're going to say, okay, we don't need any more. They're going to send a message back to the brain to say, hey, we don't need any more. And then the brain's going to respond by reducing, I'll draw this on here for you, by reducing the number of, or the amount of TSH. And then in response to that, the thyroid is going to produce less T3 and less T4. So then you're not continuously bombarding your cells. Now the same is true on the other side of it. If your cells feel like they don't get enough hormone, they're going to send a message to the brain to say, we need more. And then the brain is going to instead increase the TSH, and your thyroid is going to respond by increasing T4 and T3. Okay, so that's a typical well-functioning system. Now what happens in hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism is that this gets a little bit wonky. Okay, so I'm going to just explain this in terms of looking at labs because that's what a lot of my, my patients have questions about. So I'm going to back this up. Okay, if we have somebody who comes in and let's say they are feeling really fatigued, they just, they wake up tired, no matter how much sleep they get, maybe they're in a little bit more pain, maybe they're having trouble losing weight, uh, maybe a little bit of depression, brain fog, dry skin, their hair is falling out, all of these symptoms of hypothyroidism, I'm going to be running these labs, okay? And probably some more on top of that. But if we're just looking at these labs, what I'm going to expect to see to come back on those labs is we're going to have a really high... TSH, but we're going to have a low T4, T3, okay? Now, the reason for that is that the system's a little bit hijacked, right? So you have low hormone. Remember, this is the fuel in your engine, and so if that's low, your body's going to get all the symptoms of low thyroid or hypothyroid, and so your cells are going to feel that. And then they're going to send a message back to your brain that says, hey, we really need some more thyroid hormone. And your brain is going to say, great. And it's going to produce a bunch of this thyroid-stimulating hormone to tell your thyroid to make more. The problem in this condition is that the thyroid, for whatever reason, isn't listening. It's not receiving the message. Um, so that, that's the problem. So then you're going to have a lot of thyroid-stimulating hormone production trying to tell that thyroid to make more, but the thyroid's not hearing the message. So there's a mix-up in communication, and it's still just producing its regular amount, which is now too low. Okay? Now the opposite occurs if somebody has hyperthyroid. Now a common symptom of hyperthyroid is something called exophthalmos, and that's when the eyes start to protrude a little bit out of the face, and so they can look like you have like really big eyes. Okay? So that's one symptom. Hypothyroid is way more common than hyperthyroid, but it still shows up, so I want to tell you about it. And hyperthyroid, what we're going to see is we're going to actually have a low TSH, and we're going to have a high T4 and T3. And the reason for that is because if you're hyper, you have a lot of thyroid. So lots of T4, T3, the cells are getting overwhelmed, and then they're sending a message back to the brain to say, no more. Please stop this stimulation. We have enough. So your brain is going to reduce the thyroid stimulating hormone to tell the thyroid, what we're putting on the brakes, stop producing so much. But once again, the thyroid isn't hearing the message. So it's still just pumping out a bunch of hormone, even though the brake pedal is trying to control it. Okay? So that's kind of what a typical thyroid pathway looks like. Um, when I have patients come in, I always run these three labs, but I also am usually running other things like reverse T3, like your thyroid antibodies. There's a couple there I want to look at to make sure there's not an autoimmune thyroid condition like Hashimoto's or Graves' disease going on. And oftentimes I'm looking at a number of other factors that can play a role in thyroid health, like your iron or your ferritin levels, um, some of your cofactors, your B vitamins, your minerals. I'm also sometimes looking at adrenal health because your adrenals and your, your thyroid are really strongly connected. So this is usually only part of a picture when patients come in to see me, but it's a really important picture to understand. So I hope this was helpful for you. I hope that helped make sense of these thyroid labs and these numbers and what they mean and why it's important to really see all of them together instead of just one or two because you want to see the whole picture and not just part of it. 
So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave some comments below. I'm happy to answer them. If there's other videos you'd like to see like this where we explain some of the, some of the hormones, I'm happy to do that. All right, see you next time. Bye.